Hello and welcome back to another Bitcoin weekly update and what a week it has been. It has been a lot of crazy growth and movement in the market over the past seven days and we're going to be diving into everything right now. But as always, before we jump into the topic of today's video, please make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video below if you enjoy it. Make sure you're subscribed as we are dropping multiple videos every single week to stay on top of everything in the fast paced Bitcoin and crypto economy and make sure you hit the bell notification icon so you can get notified when all of those videos drop in order to hit your crypto goals. So as always, let's dive into the weekly market update. First and foremost, we have the overall market cap approaching the $2 trillion mark. Um, if we look at the data from this time last week, we are up from $1.79 trillion all the way up to 1.94 trillion as of today, February 16th, 2024. We did approach 1.7 trillion. We actually hit 1. Point, sorry, 1.97 trillion just shy of the 2 trillion mark before coming back down between yesterday and today. We're currently sitting at 1.94 trillion, but a huge amount of inflow into the overall market since this time last week up over 15 billion dollars in the past seven days alone so fear and greed index obviously somewhat reflective of that a lot more capital coming into the market we're sitting at a 72 score on the feed and the fear and greed index um obviously up a good chunk since last week we were sitting around the 60 64 66 mark so we are up all the way to the 72 on the fear and greed index. Um, obviously, as we approach the halving, it'll be interesting to see how the fear and greed index continues to fluctuate. But with all of this inflow, um, we are up on the fear and greed index map. Some of the biggest winners and losers of the past week. Um, we've got VeChain leading the way in the top 100 in terms of seven day movers and highest gains up over 56 percent in seven days which is crazy numbers for the past week um some other notable mentions here like sia coin stacks up over 37 percent are we up over 36 percent immutable x beam helium uh the graph and render all having very good weeks as well um uniswap up 12 percent Algorand up 11%, Ethereum itself up 11%, Gala and BNB up 10, 11% as well, um, Mina up over 9.9%. Also, some of the top losers of the past seven days, we've got Celestia, um, the likes of Celestia, Osmosis, Injective, Litecoin, Bitcoin SV. Some of these coins like Celestia and Injective in particular have had very good performance over the past uh, 30 to 90 days, I would say. So, you know, potentially you could argue they were in for a little bit of a correction. So they've made such big gains over the past 30 to 90 days that um, they're now seeing a little bit of a pullback in the past week or so. But they are the top winners and, gain and, and losers. Obviously, a lot more winners and gainers than losers here with so much capital flowing into the market. Obviously, Bitcoin making those big moves over the past seven days, breaking the $50,000 mark. I think that is the biggest update of the week here. Bitcoin sitting at 51900 as of the time of recording here, got almost up to 53000 yesterday. So closed above the $50,000 mark, and we made a separate video on that yesterday. But um, a lot of bullish sentiment around Bitcoin breaking that 50k mark given the fact that it has not been above $50,000 since December of 2021. Um, yes, we are on the countdown to the halving. Of course, we are only about 66 days away. Um, currently due or anticipated to occur on April 23rd of this year. This days and the days of the halving is a moving target. Obviously, it will take place at a block height, officially a block height of 840,000. So um, this date in April is a moving target, but currently it's due to happen around the 23rd of April. Um, Bitcoin dominance, um, if we open up the Bitcoin dominance chart, um, 
on the daily, we can see that Bitcoin is up slightly again on the week. We were sitting about, I think, 53 and a half percent this time last week, just over 53 percent. We're currently at a 54 percent dominance. Again, it'll be interesting to see if some of this capital inflow into Bitcoin begins to flow into alts over the next few weeks and if Bitcoin can continue to march towards 60,000 but currently sitting at a 54% dominance rate up from about 53 last week. Um, checking out the altcoin index, um, it is not officially altcoin month just yet. Bitcoin is still outperforming altcoins as of the past month or so. Going down to review the top 50 performers over the past month, Tau token is leading the way up 143% over the past month. Um, VeChain making those big moves this week, as we just saw. Uh, we've got Stacks token, um, IMX, Sui, uh, Rune, Caspa, Render, and Link, all very high performers over the past month or so, all up more than 25%. Bitcoin itself is up 22% on the month. So performing extremely well also. Um, and then trailing slowly or sorry, trailing quickly behind Bitcoin, we've got, uh, you know, Tron, BNB, Matic, um, C token, Cardano, AVAX, Ethereum up all around 11 to 20%. Um, obviously, much more high performers than losers over the past month, but um, Monero, Injective, Quant, Ordi, and uh, a few of the likes are down between 10 and 20%. So moving on to the Narratives Index, um, as we've demonstrated in other videos on the channel, it's worth keeping an eye on the different narratives that are performing throughout the course of the next bull run. Each narrative will have its own season within the next bull cycle. And you really wanna be keeping on top of the different assets that you hold and understanding which uh, narratives they are a part of. Uh, we've done separate videos on this channel demonstrating how certain narratives have correlations with where their coins will actually peak during the course of the next bull run, i.e peaking in the months before Bitcoin peaks or uh, peaking, you know, in the month or two after Bitcoin peaks. So worth keeping an eye on all of that, but some of the best narrative performers over the past month to date. Uh, we've got Bitcoin, the Bitcoin narrative itself obviously makes a lot of sense given the Bitcoin growth over the past week or two. Uh, we've got oracles, we've got decentralized physical infrastructure. We dropped another video on DPIN very recently on the channel, so you can check that out. GambleFi, AI, Layer 2s, Memes, and GameFi all uh, making up a lot of the mind share when it comes to the different narratives that are performing well this month. Some of the not so great performers, we've got NFTs, um, we've got account abstractions, we've got real world assets, liquid staking derivatives, and privacy. So again, worth keeping an eye on all of this and thinking about which narratives your assets are a part of and how they will perform as we approach the next bull market. Big news with the Bitcoin ETFs as well. We are continuing to accumulate at very high rates with the Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, Grayscale still leading the way, obviously, but a huge amount of outflow from Grayscale into the other ETFs over the past number of weeks. It continues to happen and um, mainly due to the fact that their fees are just so much higher than the other ETFs. BlackRock leading the way of the cohort of the new ETFs. They have now accumulated over 109,000 Bitcoin. Fidelity leading the way in a close second with 82,000 Bitcoin. Um, then we've got ARK Invest and Bitwise pretty close with 24,900 and 19K respectively. And then on the lower end of the spectrum, we've got Invesco, Vanek, Valkyrie, Franklin, Franklin Templeton and Wisdom Tree, all with between 500 and 6,000 Bitcoin. So overall, as we look at the Bitcoin ETF accumulation since its inception in the middle of January, all new, all nine new ETFs, excluding Grayscale, have now accumulated over 251,000 Bitcoin in total since the inception of the ETFs. That is in about 25 days of trading. 
So we're still mapping to about 10,000 Bitcoin being accumulated every single day by these nine ETFs. And there is simply not enough supply to go around. The amount of Bitcoin that are entering circulation right now is only a fraction of 10,000 every single day. And that number is going to get cut in half with the upcoming halving in April of 2024. So we're beginning to see the price squeeze. We've seen it over the past week or so with Bitcoin breaking through the $50,000 mark. And there is simply not enough Bitcoin to go around, especially if the ETFs continue to accumulate the amount of Bitcoin that they're accumulating right now at about 10,000 new Bitcoin every single day being purchased by the nine new ETFs. Again, remembering this is just the United States and the nine ETFs that were recently approved, not including anything going on in Europe or Asia. And there is a number of new ETFs um, likely to be approved in both Asia and Europe. I think Hong Kong is um, up and coming as well. So lots of stuff to keep an eye on, but simply not enough supply to go around. So we're beginning to see prices squeeze up as a result. Um, again, we're seeing that Bitcoin uh, ETF inflows obviously picking up over the past uh, week or so in the past few days. We're beginning to see some record days with the amount of Bitcoin that BlackRock and Fidelity are accumulating. Um, once again, just a small breakdown here of all of the insights with regards to Bitcoin holdings. So Grayscale still leading the way, even though they have a large amount of outflows. The nine new BTFs are now at 252,000 Bitcoin. MicroStrategy, um, as we know, are an extremely bullish uh, publicly traded entity with Michael Saylor at the helm. They've accumulated over 190,000 Bitcoin themselves. Tether Holdings holding about 66K. Publicly traded miners about 40K. Tesla about 10K and Block Inc about 8K. So some of these are the largest um, entities holding Bitcoin in the world. Um, interesting to keep an eye on this and seeing if new companies and new businesses will begin to accumulate Bitcoin as part of their treasuries and as part of their reserves. Finally, moving on to the um, cycle low multiple. Basically, what we're looking at here is the performance of all of the previous Bitcoin cycles in the lead up to and the aftermath of the Bitcoin halving. So this line down the middle here represents day zero or the halving date for the past three cycles. The different colors on the map represent the performance of Bitcoin in each era or in each Bitcoin cycle in the lead up to and aftermath of the halving. And as we can see, what typically happens with day zero and the halving is it creates um, this large price action to the upside in the immediate aftermath and the 12 to 18 months after the halving event. So we are currently in era four and trending on this red line. We can obviously see this uptick in the past couple of weeks with the price of Bitcoin um, beginning to increase here. But as we approach the halving date and date zero, um, what we would expect to see is some exponential growth with the price of Bitcoin. Um, as we can see with the different eras, era one, era two, era three, we have seen somewhat of diminishing returns. Uh, the question remains, will we continue to see diminishing returns or will the ETF have such a big impact on the price of Bitcoin that we will break the trend of diminishing returns and potentially see exponential returns as a result? But that remains to be seen. What we can see is an uptick in the uh, price of Bitcoin as we approach the halving here, similar to similar to what happened in era two or the second uh, cycle after the 2016 Bitcoin halving. So lots of interesting stuff going on and price action uh, is beginning to trend upwards as a result of all of this ETF hysteria and the amount of Bitcoin that is being bought up by the institutions. So I think the biggest story of the past week or two really just has been the bullish sentiment around the amount of Bitcoin being accumulated by the ETFs and the price action of Bitcoin blasting through that $50,000 mark, um, blasting through $50,000 and closing above $50,000 since the first time uh, for the first time since December of 2021. So 
a lot of bullish sentiment in the market at the moment. That is the update for this week and the past seven days. So as always, if you enjoy these videos, please make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video below. Make sure you are subscribed. We are dropping multiple videos every single week to stay on top of everything in the fast paced Bitcoin economy. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification icon so you can get notified about those videos when they drop so you can hit your crypto goals. As always, we will catch you in the next one.